This next act is an innovator in the field of light, sound, and color. His work is designed to nurture harmony through symmetry and ever-evolving beauty patterns. He has an unconventional way of manipulating light, which we'll see in a moment, and then he'll join us for a chat. Welcome, Ken Jenkins. Welcome, Hi Ken Jenkins. Hi there. Pleasure to be here. Ken, thank you so much for being here. Um, we like being with you. We, we, everyone just enjoyed watching your video. Now, I think something that's on everyone's mind is this was made a few decades ago. How did you make that? Well, it was, it's not computer graphics. There were, there were none back then. So uh, I started this work in 1969. What it is is optical projections. Uh, comes from basically boxes and projectors of various sorts that are modified and customized to project various kinds of uh, images somewhat similar to what you see. Um, originally, they didn't have all the symmetries that uh, are in the video, but I uh, I did get actually projection lenses that would make kaleidoscopic kind of images. Now I do more of it digitally. But um, anyway, the, so the images uh, uh, originated optically and uh, there's a name for it that co goes way back to the, I think the 20s, which is Lumia. Uh, it just basically means, or the way I like to define it is how many ways can you figure out to break up a beam of light, make it move, make it colorful and make it pretty. And um, that's, that's my definition. You won't find that on Wikipedia. It basically comes down to two kind of modalities. One's transmissive, transmittive and one is reflective, meaning that um, reflective would be like if you took a piece of aluminum foil and you aimed a flashlight at it and held it to a screen, it would make a pattern. And if you moved the aluminum foil, the pattern would move. And that's uh, in a nutshell what a really basic Lumia would be. Um, I do it with very slow moving motors and a whole bunch of them all in working together. And um, then uh, that's so, anyway, that's, that would be reflective. Transmittive would be more like going through some, something clear, like a piece of glass or plastic that's clear, but is not smooth, it has texture to it. And then as it moves again, if you have a beam of light going through it or even a laser, um, you'll get a pattern and then you capture it shooting it off a screen with a video camera. I, I started with the little film but moved to video pretty quickly. Part of my intention with uh, these images is to create something that's sort of uh, more peaceful and calming and 
um, serene and graceful. Um, I'm not into the kind of flashy stuff. So um, that kind of differed, that kind of approach was different than most of what was happening when I was starting out in the very late 60s, which was, you know, set to rock and roll and was more dynamic. Uh, so I didn't quite fit into that scene and it wasn't even until um, ambient and new age music came along that I was started finding soundtracks that I really like to work with that are, were more at kind of the tempo and uh, rate that I you know prefer. One of the ways I like to characterize my work, uh, especially the more abstract, um, I like to call a playground for the imagination. And what I'm meaning is that if it's abstract and it's it's you know it's non-objective, it's not things, it's just moving light and color. Um, it's sort of like moving clouds or a fireplace or any other things that people stare at and kind of, oh, that cloud looks like a dog or whatever, right? And so your mm -hmm. imagination can basically add to what you're seeing. And I found that when images move slowly, um, that kind of maximizes the, uh, the um, allows the imagination time to uh, be able to be part of the process. I'm looking for a more kind of meditative feel. In fact, uh, the kind of stuff I do, as you just saw, <laughs> um, is pretty ideal for meditation and mandalas are actually even used in meditation and there's actually a word for it that's similar to a mantra, which is yantra, which is a, I think a Sanskrit word or something, but it means a, a mandala and the idea is to use mandalas to um, have an effect similar to a mantra only on a visual level. Mm. So you keep going deeper and deeper into something slowly and you're able to use more and more of your imagination as you go deeper and deeper and it's a, an endless journey. So you stop worrying and thinking about when it's going to end and what's happening next and you enter a different zone. I think that's a good description. I, I mean, I, I, I tend to want to move beyond linear time and space. Uh, and that, of course, also gets us into the realm of, well, under what conditions would the human necessarily be in other than kind of relaxed and comfortable. As I said, meditation is a, a, a kind of an obvious thing. And and, and the, in my early inspirations had more to do with altered states, um, initially marijuana and, and so forth, but um, not too far in, it was psychedelics. And what I discovered is the psychedelics enhanced the experience by such an order of magnitude that it became kind of my sort of prime intention is uh, to create a space that where you could be taking psychedelics with a, a with an intent and, and with a set and setting that was sort of optimized to the psychedelic experience. And uh, it's actually where I hope to be going more in, uh, as I move forward in the coming years is uh, with this psychedelic renaissance that's happening right now, and legalization happening and all this stuff, and especially therapies. Um, in the area of therapeutic work, it's a, you know, it's an incredible area that's expanding every day. And uh, I, I intend to be more part of that going forward. We have to slow down to be able to hear on a deeper level more than just our day-to-day -day lives. Um, one of my spiritual teachers talks about that uh, what we often call soul, whatever that may mean to anyone, um, uh, moves and speaks and, and interacts very slowly. And it, you can't basically get in touch with your soul without slowing down the, you know, the, all this rapidness. And, um, and to have both in your life, to have a balance of the more upbeat, <laughs> and stimulated life that we have, but also always allow periods of more serenity. Um, one of my favorite sources of music for many, many years, by the way, has been a, a program that's still on, it is now on the web, has been for years, called Music from the Hearts of Space. And their sort of subtitle for their great variety of music they play um, is uh, Slow Music for Fast Times. So that okay. sort of fits right with what we're talking about. Well, thank you so much, Ken. We appreciate you for coming here and educating the family. And uh, yes, everyone, please watch Illumination. Thank you, Ken.
Thank you, Ken. You're, you're quite welcome. Internal family.